Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for being here on this wonderful afternoon or morning or whatever it is that you you clicked on this video. Thank you for stopping by. We're going to go ahead and listen to some Alan Holdsworth. Hold on, give me a second. I'm a little thirsty. Totally just spilled water. All right, we're going to listen to Alan Holdsworth. Uh, we're going to listen to this track, Low Levels, High Stakes. This is his A off of the A Studio album, released 1993, uh, Hard Hat Area. This was a suggestion by Nick from over at Nick and Lex. So Nick, thank you so much for the suggestion. You gave me this track. I asked for I asked for a good one. I wanted like your, your favorite track and this is the one you gave me. So we're gonna go ahead and listen to it. It is the third track on the album, clocking in at about nine minutes, a soft nine minutes. Let's go ahead and give it a listen. We'll talk about it after. Here we go. jazz inspired opening. Thank you. 
swept that into this kind of vocal-esque passage. This to me is a really great example of a band showing off their technical proficiencies while still making and playing a, a track, like still making a piece of music that is 
greatly coherent. Um, I'm going to talk about everybody, but I'm going to keep Alan till the end, okay? Uh, because damn, Alan basically came in halfway through. I was listening in the beginning and I'm like, am I still supposed to be hearing guitar? I was like listening. I'm like, I don't hear guitar at all. So I didn't know if I was missing something, but no, he, he was missing until he came in about halfway through. So let's put Alan aside for just a moment. Okay. Steve Hunt is who's playing keyboards here. Let's, let's, let's dive into his, uh, his Wikipedia page. The jazziness that he brings into that opening, alongside of the excellent bed of atmosphere, is wonderful. I like how, not only Steve, but I guess this could apply to everyone, uh, including Alan, but they shred on their instrument, but then they always bring it back down to this beautiful subtlety, this kind of cool, calm, collected blue. And I'm really feeling that with his jazziness that he brings. This track actually feels... Can I tell you? This track kind of feels like Pat Metheny Group mixed with a little bit of Maha Vishnu because it has this coolness that I've been listening to with Pat Metheny Group that we've been covering here on the channel. It has this coolness to it, but the moments of intensity doesn't quite get to what I've heard from Maha Vishnu, but like it, it, it reaches in the, into the cookie box a little bit. So, Steve Hunt, uh, American jazz pianist and composer. Who's he's worked with? Well, he's worked with the likes of Gatto Barbieri, Angela Bofeld, never heard of her, Stanley Clark, heard of him, George Duke, Kenny G, um, uh, and many, many, many others. I mean, he's worked with a lot of people, including, obviously, Alan Holdsworth. Just excellent, excellent piano playing that he brings here. Then, I want to talk about Scully Severson, and I hope I'm pronouncing that because that is a cool name <laughs> on the bass. You already heard it. When, when Steve was doing his job on the piano and doing his thing, the bass playing was tasty. The tone he has is rubbery, bendy, but very firm. Then he gets a solo. And it's not just a solo like, you know, a few bars and get out of the, get off the stage, go back again. Uh, this is like a section. <laughs> and I could, I could have gone in the direction of, okay, I love a bass solo, but it's a, it's a little bit long in the tooth, right? But once again, because of the, the subtlety that the band brings here, because of the organic nature of it, I'm loving every second of it. Whether he's ripping it up, like I said, he's going to need some new strings after that performance, or whether he's just putting down a simple few lines to add more ambience to the music. It's excellent what he's doing, constructing a story within that, right? But actually what I was most surprised at listening to this was Gary Husband on the drums. Um, I was trying to think of a joke for this. <laughs> Couldn't think of one. But Gary Husband on the drums, his drumming was, to me, the star, to be honest. And maybe, you know, drum sensibilities. But he brings this intensity that the whole time while he was playing, I could not think of anything but, like, lava or magma brewing just beneath the surface. Tension breaking the cracks of the earth starting to show with red lines like you could just see the spitfire coming up from his drums and every once in a while you'd have a little burst of lava but it was never pompeii it was always just something beneath the surface like an underwater volcano his his under the current intensity i think was stunning in here and the way that he plays a lot of times using the crashes but in very subtle ways in the background to the left and right and very atmospherically in the back, he uses that to kind of raise the other members of the band, raise the moments, those bigger moments that like obviously they bring in. So when Alan really starts going off, he uses those crashes especially to like bring that up. Same thing with Steve on the piano, he uses that to bring it up. And I just thought it was interesting how much cymbal work he allowed himself there. And then, of course, when he did bring in the kick, it did put forth that intensity. But what I thought was also kind of cool was the snare placement. I kind of noticed it near the end of the track. Like, in the parts that you would expect the snare to come in, it was always, like, one or even more off. So we had a little bit of, like, police situation with Stuart Copeland where you always take the snare and move it forward one. So it creates a different sort of groove. So I thought that was really cool, uh, the way that was done. And then, obviously... Saving to last, not the best, all of them are the best, <laughs> but saving Alan Holdsworth to the last. I like how, yes, this is his album, but he allowed the other musicians to have the run of the gamut for the first half. And then he comes in, once again, never taking away from what was, what was made before. He doesn't come in 
and completely disrupt everything and toss in some new random section that's like, okay, what are you doing? Right? No. It continues the thread and raises that intensity in another way. Especially when he gets to the ending, and I don't know how he does it, but when he brings in that kind of, I'm going to call it choking seagull tone. <laughs> that, like a seagull comes down, grabs your french fry, but you grab the, don't, don't do that, but like, you know what I mean? Like, it's the, like that, actually that was a great impression of his guitar tone at the end, but it's that kind of like a vocal fry in a sense, but obviously a guitar vocal fry. Which, at the very end, his guitar was very much emulating vocal lines, so that's actually really appropriate. So that intensity was really brought by him uh, at the end, which makes this, to me, a, a superb track. This is a good one. So, Nick, thank you so much for the recommendation. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, you guys, let me know what you thought of the, of the track. Let me know in the comments below. Follow me, of course, on the places that are here on the screen. Thank you for stopping by. If for some reason you haven't, go and check out Nathan Lex's channel and uh, check out the little conversation we had and everything. Da, 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 da. Listen, enjoy the rest of your day. Come back tomorrow and I will see you all then, guys. Bye.